Morning everybody, Jacob Lundquist here from Quist Blade Works, uh, working on variant 013. This is a custom order uh, for Aiden Knight. He also makes this awesome uh, optic wood, so it's it's uh, cr clear acrylic, I believe, or polycarbonate. G10 backer, makes a bunch of varieties of this. So see, he sent me this for his personal knife. Super excited to get uh, going on this. This will be the first one. I did a prototype of his early builds on the optic wood, um, and now he's kind of refined it and made it better. So we're gonna get going on this guy today and uh, kind of gonna give you a full follow through and just work through the process of making the scales uh, day one here uh, for the variant 013. So first and foremost, for this wonderful thing that's going through the CAD and CAM, this one's gonna be pretty basic. There'll be no internal pocketing uh, for this, just to keep the strength and everything. Um, so next up, I'll be uh, taping down this backside. I do all the flats and all the important work um, here. I measured everything. This thing is almost perfectly flat within a thou or so. So I don't have to, usually I plane it down first, but this is actually really, really nice and flat. So I'll machine out the back here with all of this wonderful detail. And um, yeah, so we're gonna tape it up some double-sided adhesive and put it down there and then touch it off. All right, so I got it all taped up here. So I just peel that back off and I just set it down here, center it. I have uh, my locations for my hold downs uh, for op two. So I just wanna make sure I cover all those up and get it all ready. All right, the optic wood is on there, good and stuck. So now we're gonna bring it over here Initialize the machine. And when I initialize this guy, I always put in um, my critical tool path first and my critical tools. So I'll be putting in the zero uh, or one sixteenth end mill, zero six two five, uh, two flute, solid carbide, and we'll get started on this guy. All right, got in the uh, 0625 1 16th end mill right now. So that's all good to go. And then now what it's gonna do is you just go insert tool, resume, and she's gonna have a touch off on here. So now we use the bit zero. This actually uh, zeroes out my Z axis. All right, so with the bit zero, you have this little uh, thing to make a circuit. You connect that to your call it nut. Uh, you just hover this guy right over your Z. I, put, I try to put it right in the middle of the part. Um, really simple here, you hit probe. We're using the bit zero version two on the Z and you just hit begin probe. And this guy will come down and touch off and that'll be your exact Z. It's that easy. So when I first uh, set these all up, I actually made sure that I kind of knew the machine. So my, you see my Z0 or my XY0 is right in the middle here. That's actually the middle of the table as well, perfectly in the middle of the eight by eight. So all I have to do, which is really nice for my XY, is just go to wrap position, put it right in the center. And then that is my XY0. Perfect, very simple. That's one thing you ought to think through when you uh, kind of set up your tooling and set up your fixturing is how, so I don't have to touch off anything. I can just hit zero, zero, boom, it's done. Uh, I've been programming everything off the center of the table. All right, now all we have to do is load a file. So I got all my posts here, op one, and we are gonna do, we have an op one, no pockets right there. So op one, carbon fiber, but I use the same one, the full, no pockets. And all we have to do is hit start job. All right, before that, definitely want to put down the safety screen. So we are all safe and dandy. So I'm just gonna hit start job and start. So with the uh, Nomad, it always touches off your tool height just to ensure where it's at. Um, I'm, I actually really like this feature. Uh, then this doesn't okay. have, of course, an automatic tool changer. So now it's going to actually, in the code, say, all right, load tool one, which I already did. So I preloaded tool one. So I just hit resume. And we'll go touch off one more time. And now these first holes are my uh, dowel holes for locating it. So 
There we go. So now op, that first operation is complete. Nice thing is, okay, hey, load tool number two. I got my little batch of tools here. I got one, two, three, four, five, six are my main tools. Tool two here is an eighth inch, two flute, solid carbide uh, end mill. So we're gonna swap that out right now. All right, so now we got the uh, eighth inch in there right now. So all we gotta do is close the door and hit resume. Again, touches off, tells it how high it is, relates all that to the G code, and we're off to the races. Really love this little uh, CNC. This thing has been a game changer for me to be able to make my own scales, uh, help me make my own uh, titanium liners, and uh, yeah, so highly recommended. Nice circle interpolating. I program everything off of uh, Fusion 360. Awesome program. You can do all the depth codes. There we go. So really the great thing about having a, a CNC is now you can come over to the workbench and start working on the other parts of the knife. So I got the pivot right here. Everything's from TI connector, uh, except for the uh, Alpha uh, knife supply. I have the uh, thrust washers there. Got the uh, all the screws. Stop pins, standoffs, everything is ready. And also, of course, everything's running on a ceramic cage bearings and ceramic detent balls. So the biggest thing I have to worry about um, is this is how my uh, lock bars come in. I get them laser cut, and then I do all the finishing. I drill out, re-drill, uh, re and get all the holes exactly where I want them, and bring them into this type of uh, space. So actually CNC out the relief. I uh, hand grind in the thumb area for the relief and then um, I actually then start setting the lock without any detent balls in it. Oops, sorry. Um, so I get that and I carbonize it to make sure it's the right fit. And then lastly, I press in the, uh, the ceramic balls. This is a dual detent knife. And then this is the blade that's gonna be for this variant. So this is a uh, blasted stone wash. And this is one of the last LMAX as well. So, so yeah, I'm just gonna get everything laid out here for variant 013. All right, tool two just got done. Now it's gonna go on to the engraving. It's kind of fun where I put in the uh, made in North America and all that. All right, so after engraving, I have to actually swap out the spindle, um, call it, and go to a larger quarter inch. Uh, this is an extra thing you have to, you do have to buy um, if you want to do that. But then that's what I use, a quarter inch um, chamfer tool. So I'm gonna chamfer all the edges. All right, chamfer tool is in. Ready to chamfer all the edges. All right, at this point, I do a quality check. A big one is the uh, fitment. Oh, oh gosh, fitment of the standoff. Make sure there's no wiggle. It has a nice, tight fit, which that is perfect. And I also do um, a depth check on all my depths to make sure we're looking good. So that is what we're doing. And I'm looking right now, I think we're a little high, it looks like. So I'm gonna probably have to run these counter bores one more time. And um, yeah, then we'll get this thing all set up. All right, op one is done. Did a quality check, everything looks really good. Checks out. So now remove this guy off there. I have to pop um, and just ream out these holes for locating and I'll flip it over and put it in op two. All right, pop the holes through. Look at this thing, this is like so cool. You can see, I threw it. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, I have my tool in. I also touch off on the bottom of the plate now. So then I um, bring it to thickness 
ensuring that this is from the bottom up. So that's how I program Opt 2 to ensure I get the exact thickness that I need out of this guy. So we're gonna flip this guy over and bolt it down. All right, so for that, I was gonna explain that. So I have these two dowel pins right here, and those locate right in my fixture at a certain point so that I can program it and get, every time now I can repeatedly flip this over and get everything to line up from op one to op two. That's kind of what the purpose of these are. And then I have all my hold downs right here as well. So here we go. And there it is, all bolted down, ready to rock. I got the uh, file loaded, this is op two. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna, um, Go in here and do an adaptive, I can show you. It's gonna do an adaptive and cut down on this thing, bringing it down to an eighth inch thick. And then she's gonna corner bore, and then I also do a bore there. And what I do then is I put the screws in to hold it down before it does the count, uh, the contour to cut everything out. And then finally it does a uh, full 3D mill for the uh, fillet on the end, so. Here we go. All right, these are now brought to thickness. Um, I'll definitely have to sand these and polish these when they're on, but that uh, looks awesome. So next up, I have to put uh, my hold down screws into each of these holes to hold it down because the next operation is going to cut these out and releasing it from the main um, piece. So got to make sure it's held down good and tight. And uh, yeah, so next up is that. All right, there you have it. So everything lines up now. I have, uh, you know, threaded holes inside the, um, inside the fixture plate. So that's a big thing when you're designing this stuff is, you know, op one, I just, is pretty easy. You just use double-sided tape, but then the op two is where all the precision happens for lining everything up. So I got, you know, two in indicators here. These are, you know, doll pinned into the plate. So that gets me parallel in my X and my Y, bring it down to thickness. And then after that, I actually go through the, all the holes that I have for the scales themselves. And those are then you know, drilled and tapped into the fixture plate to hold everything down. So here we go. All right, they just got cut out. They look awesome. So next I uh, usually remove this and then I've got to put in the uh, eighth inch ball end mill and that'll then put the uh, radius and fillet on the edge. So here we go. There it is, contours on. Wow, this thing's gonna look incredible. All right, just took these out of the CNC, brought them outside, get a little better sunlight. So I got to countersink those holes right there. That's for the liner lock. And then I'm gonna sand these up and polish them. Sand them up to probably, I don't know, 100, 1,500, 2,000 grit. Get them nice and shiny. Get that texture off of there. But this is gonna be cool. Look at those things. Yeah, if you want to check out uh, Aiden, he's A Knight uh, Wood Products on Instagram. I'll link them in the video. Um, make some really cool scale material and such. Uh, also for other knives. So this is going to be a very unique variant, which I love. All right, next up, I'm going to be doing a countersink into these bad boys. Oh, sorry, I got the handle in the way. Um, these are the for the liner. Um, so here we go. I have one of my screws here. This is one process that I gotta get just right. I do have it locked down in here with a uh, lock nut, but I, I just, I get scared. And I never worked with this stuff before, so it's a little bit softer than I'm used to. So I'm just kind of walking it in. Oh. I think I got it. Oh. Back one feels good. The other one's a little bit light. <laughs> so what I can do is lock this down, lock my screw. Go. All right, I think I got them both. They look equal. Feels great. So I'm just going for a sub flush look so it's this nice sub flush from the uh, surface there so you don't feel it when you're 
on the knife and that looks just perfect all right so really what's next is uh, a lot of sanding so i'm gonna go you know 400 grit 800 1500 maybe up to 2000 get these nice and pretty on the outside get rid of that cloudiness from the mill and uh, yeah so i'm gonna do that right now a lot of wet sanding and then i'll um probably not gonna video it because it'd be really boring but i'll show you the results all right i just sanded these guys up to 2000 then i put them on the uh polish wheel and wow this stuff is amazing it just pops like crazy all right i think it's time to we got to try it out let's let's uh, throw together a rough go of it and see um yeah throw together i have some spare uh, liner locks that i can try out and oh can't wait hi all right so what we're gonna do now is do a quick mock-up it's just somewhere that i just can't i can't wait to do it so we're uh got all the hardware here um this will just be kind of more of a dry fit and uh yeah excuse all this I, I didn't have a great setup right away so i do have a test liner this is from an older knife um it's probably going to be too short uh because i ground it a little too much but it's a good test one to see if fitment and everything's feeling okay. So these are just flat heads. Everything's from TI Connector, which is some awesome hardware. Everything, so everything's titanium. Um, so there's how the liner fits, just really nice and snug, flush, beautiful. All right, then I like to put the standoffs on. That's why I really like, I, I wanted a knife that these could locate really easily. And I just know that they're at the right height and everything. So you're seeing me put this thing together for the very first time, which is always fun and a little nerve wracking because you never know. I mean, most of my knives, they do go together like really easy. So let's just hope, since I've never worked with this stuff before, but everything, you know, checked out really nice with everything. Oh, shoot. I forgot to do my fit up of this. Sometimes I gotta open this up a little bit, but that feels, feels really good. Stop pin can be really tight sometimes. So pivot, this is a reamed hole, pretty nice tight fit. There we go. Thrust washer, cage bearing, blade. Cage bearing, thrust washer. Oh uh, yeah, it should line up. Yeah, this can be a tight fit sometimes right here for the first fit up. All right, I like to just put this down a little bit so it doesn't spring out from me. Standoff screw. Actually, a little loose. So we're going to tighten up. So I might have to, I usually have to fit these liners with the, uh, so right now it's a little too spaced out. I can tell right here too, this is a little spaced out. So what I usually do is just get some padding so I don't mar anything up. And I kind of just give this a little crunch factor. Just kind of make sure it's pressed all the way down in there. There we go. So now that's all in there, in like Flynn. See how loose that is? It's super loose. And um, and the blade is really loose too. I can tell that this is not fit up really well, but geometry seems to be working. I just gotta get, so what I gotta do is just take out this pivot and then sand down the barrel a little bit. So right now I can't I can't tighten it enough to, to get it tight, to get the blade centered. Well, maybe I can. Oh, 
it's actually pretty darn good. What I usually like to do is yeah, just get it on the table here so I can see the centering. Get two wrenches. Take it just a little bit. Wow. That's awesome. This is, wow, huh? What a good looking knife. Holy moly. Let's take it outside, give it a good look. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I have that uh, brand new lock bar. I just um, sanded it flat here really quick. Um, so now what I would do is just do fit up. I have no um, detent balls in here quite yet. So I'd like to get make sure I can grind that really, really flat. And then I have to carbonize it. And I found that with having the balls in there, I just wanted to make sure I could, after carbonizing, I can make sure I knock off that edge. If there's any buildup right there on that edge to make sure it's a nice crisp lock face. So. That's what I'm doing right now is just kind of, I'm doing a first dry fit and then we'll kind of walk it in. So and the nice thing is you can kind of get a okay feel just right here. So you can kind of see that I got a, you know, I, I, it doesn't quite lock up, but it's right on the verge of locking up. So when you carbonize, you're actually removing a little bit of material. You're not building material up, but you're actually removing it. So I'm actually gonna stop right here um, after this initial grind and then carbonize it a little bit and then see if I can set the lock. So I gotta just take this off and I'll show you the carbonizing process. <laughs> Sorry, it's a janky setup. But, so I have a, um, a voltage machine actually that I got from Amazon right here. I mean, it was, I think, uh, maybe 50 bucks. Um, and I set it to 60 volts, red, on the part black on the carbide so i also got a cheap knockoff dremel i got a piece of tungsten carbide um, from usa knife maker um, they have the really good stuff so you get a really nice um, carbon and what i'm doing is we're actually carbonizing the top here and you're putting a thin layer of carbon on there to um to react to the lock face so they're equally not the lock face isn't as hard as the hardened steel, but it's not soft like titanium, which will then start to gall and then dig in and then you get lock stick, stuff like that. So pretty easy. So black on carbide, red on the part. I got these sweet little goggles that I can um, magnify myself in. Turn this puppy on to 60 volts right there. See it on the thing in my jigger. It's a little loud, so what I like to do too is just hang on to my, uh, hang on to this part. And there it is. So try to get a nice, even look. Sorry about that, um, but the camera fell over, but there it is when it's carbonized. So it's a nice, a little bit shinier look, and it's a little thin piece, pieces of carbon that you're transferring on to the titanium. Uh, so now we're gonna throw it back in the knife and see what the fit up looks like. All right, put it back in there and it still doesn't quite lock up. So we're gonna carbonize it again, see if we can walk in and just little by little. Cause I really like it when it's a nice early lockup. So it gives a little more um, relief to it, but it's coming together really nice. I think this is a good, this is actually a good spot to be in uh, instead of it being too loose and you gotta start all over with the lock bar. So on to carbonizing again. All right, it took a few times, but I got her all dialed in about uh, a few back and forth, but got the lock up right where I want it, you know, right around that 30% mark. Um, so next up is the balls. I got to put the balls into the lock. So I'm going to take this guy apart and I'll bring it over to the press. So yeah, put these little guys in. All right. So these are uh, 1 16th ceramic ball bearings, uh, detent balls. So these will go into the lock bar. 
and we try not to lose them. All right, so what I do is I use a 20,000 shim here. My what? It's actually my uh, thrust washer, and then I press it right next to the ball bearing on this arbor press, and that gives me my distance that I want from the face um, of the lock liner there, and that what will engage into the blade and hold it shut. So here we go. All right, there it is. Whoa, come on, focus. Got the detent balls into the liner. Now we can do final assembly and cleanup. All right, this is the fun part. All right, polished her up a little bit, or just cleaned it up, I mean. So next up, all I have to do is um, sharpen the blade. And I just remembered I forgot to serialize this one. Don't! So I gotta actually take it apart and put the serial number on it. But I will um, probably do that, take it apart, sharpen it, and then put the serial number on it. But fit up is great. Action is superb. Lock up is great. Yeah. So almost done. Not bad for a day. All right. I uh, serialized it. Um, see if I can get a picture of it. Sorry. Zero one three right there, and put on an edge. I'll show you in another video how I sharpen. I use the uh, Work Sharp uh, Precision Sharpening System. Works awesome. Get a near mirror finish. And this guy is ready. So next up is going to be some photography, and. Uh, yeah ship it off to the new owner but what a great build so happy